Bhagavatamrita uh, by Sanatana Goswami. Uh, if you get a chance, you can pick it up and read it. It's in the Veda base, or at least the beginning of it is in the Veda base. And it involves uh, different devotees of Krishna and shows their, uh, the, the type of relationships that they have with him. And the inhabitants of Vaikuntha are perfectly happy with a relationship based on awe and reverence and rules and regulations. They're perfectly happy with that. They think that's great. Huh? But we know there's actually a higher stage that's beyond rules and regulations and is on spontaneous love. See? So we're aiming for a higher platform of relationship with Krishna because that's our original constitutional position. These other devotees who are in a relationship of awe and veneration, that's their original constitutional position. Try to understand. Our eternal identity is in a particular rasa depending on our eternal relationship with the Lord. So we can't say to those devotees whose, whose relationship is on awe and reverence that, oh no, you should go with conjugal love. See, that, that would not be proper because they are, that's their eternal nature. We don't want to invalidate their ecstasy. That wouldn't be proper. See, so it's not like we don't go to, uh, to Trivandrum or Tirupati and say to the servants of, of those deities, oh, no, no, you should install Radha Krishna. <laughs> See, we don't say like that. Because those people are in that particular lineage because that is their eternal identity. See? And if their eternal identity requires a different kind of teaching, well, then they'll go into a different lineage in the next life or something. Krishna or Krishna arranges things like that. Why are you encountering our school instead of some other school, some other lineage, some other sampradaya? Huh? Uh, because your eternal identity, your eternal relationship is with Krishna in spontaneous love. That's what we teach. That's what Lord Chaitanya revealed. Huh? So, uh, yeah, we, we don't try to convince people that, no, actually you should worship Radha Krishna. Huh? If they're into Vaikuntha consciousness, then that's where they go. That's fine. Michael replies, in Nectar of Devotion, chapter 4, it says, some of the liberated persons who have achieved these four stages of liberation may also develop affection for Krishna and be promoted to the Goloka Vrindavan planet in the spiritual sky. Yes, but that happens here on Earth. That doesn't happen... Once they attain their position in the spiritual world, or I should say, regain it, uh, then that's it. They're, they're happy. They're satisfied. That's what spiritual means. It's eternal. In other words, those who are already promoted to the Vaikuntha planets and who possess the four kinds of liberation may also sometimes develop affection for no, 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 no. Where is that stated? No, no, no. That's not, that's not what that means. I know it's a quote, but he's really misinterpreting it. He's thinking that after they go to Vaikuntha, then they develop affection for Krishna. But that doesn't... It, no, 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 no. That happens here. That happens here. Because what, what that would mean then is that their, their situation in Vaikuntha is not eternal. But that's, that's bad philosophy. See? It's, it's true that uh, someone in the spiritual world can become covered over by material desire. And then they come to the material world for a while. You know? But then we have to uncover that original relationship so that they can go back to their eternal status. Okay? That's the process of devotional service. 
But that doesn't mean that, that that eternal relationship can change. It doesn't change. One can have multiple re, uh, eternal relationships with the Lord in multiple forms, but that's a different topic. No? All those forms are, or all those relationships are eternal. Could we say it can expand? Maybe it could expand. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't change. And that's the important point here. You know? All those relationships are eternal. Right? I, from my own experience, I can tell you it's possible to have multiple relationships with the Lord in different forms, in different abodes. Uh, but they're all eternal. They don't change. They're not subject to, to alterations. They're all in the same mood also? No. It can be in different moods. But I don't find any attraction to awe and reverence. I don't have any, I have zero attraction to awe and reverence. Where's that line? Okay, more question from Stephen Jennifer. Hey, haven't heard from you guys in a while. When a child has a reluctance to perform devotional service, is the best way to encourage them to lead by example and not push them to participate? Yeah, you can't push them. If you push them, and then devotional service becomes connected with some kind of discipline, that will ruin their mood. Huh? It will ruin their, their spontaneous attraction. We're trying to cultivate spontaneous attraction. It's like when you build a fire. Huh? You, can't, you can't make a fire burn artificially. The fire has to grow, and you have to give it the conditions that it needs to grow. Huh? So that maybe you have to blow on it, or maybe you have to put more sticks or something like that. Huh? But you can't, you can't artificially make a fire. In the same way, you can't artificially make somebody love Krishna. All you can do is give them your association. And if you have love for Krishna, then it'll naturally blossom in their hearts as well. That's a nice theory. I don't know anything about raising kids, so don't listen to me. <laughs> Marina, I think I understand now why I'm having troubles with devotional service. I was trying to present this knowledge to my friends and I couldn't conquer their arguments and I was hearing their offense. Mm. But I stayed with them and went back to Ms. Real Life. So what to do now? You stayed with them? What does that mean? Well, that's, that's really sad. This is why we don't encourage people to preach to their family and friends. Because an interest in devotional service is a very rare quality. Usually only about 1 in 10,000 people, on the average, has an interest in spiritual life. So, unless your family is very large, <laughs> it's kind of doubtful that someone in your family or in your immediate circle of friends is going to be a candidate for a devotee. What you have to do if you want to preach is, well, we, we made the program on the site. You become the coordinator for, uh, where are you at? Croatia? Or someplace. So that way, if anybody from your country comes to our site, see, we have a network that's far bigger than your network. So you're much more likely to meet someone in your area who's interested in devotional service by, through our site than you are by going out and mixing with people. <coughs> Excuse me. You, you might have a better result by making some forum, forum posts on bulletin boards or forums linked to your area. Or you might be uh, better off putting an, a, an ad in a big magazine or newspaper that reaches lots and lots of people. Huh? But just by going out and talking to your friends, uh, Ken and I went through the same thing, huh? All your friends and family kind of rejected devotional service. And this is the normal thing. This is the average, typical, common thing that happens, is that you'll try to engage your parents and friends, and they'll all reject you. And because you're new, you won't be able to counteract their arguments. And besides that, 
people are so rascal nowadays that even if you defeat their arguments, they won't accept it. See? They're cheating. So you, all the people around you have the cheating mentality. And every time you present arguments, they just ignore you. So this is very discouraging. It's better not to try to make your friends into devotees. It's better to make new friends who are devotees. Huh? That's a successful strategy. So yeah, if you hear offenses by your friends and your family, then that's going to impact your devotional service, of course. But the best thing to do is you cut off your relationship with those people. Even if it means becoming very alone. That's all right. That's better for hearing and chanting. More questions? Question from Lisa. In the past you have said that a devotee should 